Hi everyone, I'm Cecilia Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the World Community and I would like to welcome all of you there joining us this Tuesday, December 29th, to do Lacto Divina and to Probe Sacred Scripture. Today we will be reading the first letter of St. John, chapter 2, verses 3 to 11 for the first reading. So we are still in Christmas season. Today is the fifth day of the octave of Christmas and we continue the reading of the first letter of St. John. So, first letter of St. John, chapter 2, verses 3 to 11. Responsorial Psalm is Psalm 96, 96. And the Gospel be Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 35. First reading of St. John. My little children, now by this, by this we may be sure that we know God if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to God, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar, and in such a person the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person the love of God has reached perfection. By this we may be sure that we are in him, how, whoever says, I abide in him, ought to walk just as he walked. Beloved, I am now writing you a new commandment, but an old commandment, that you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. Yet, I am writing you a new commandment that is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says, I am the light, while hating a brother, I am in the light, while hating a brother or sister, is still in darkness. Whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light, and in such a person there is no cause of stumbling. But whoever hates another, Another believer is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and does not know the way to go, because the darkness has brought, has brought on blindness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, I've been talking about this since five days ago, that Christmas is the feast of light. The light of the world comes to us. The light of the world came to us for the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And this great light is the birth, is incarnation, is the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in his first letter, St. John tells us that to abide in Jesus is to walk in the light. And if you hate a brother or a sister, you are not in the light. You cannot say, I am not in darkness. I walk in the light. If you hate a brother or sister, if you hate a believer, if you do not walk in the way of the Lord, you are in darkness. And you might not see it because darkness made you blind. It's a very strong word of God. That, it, that wants to put away all the darkness and blindness of our soul. We may be blindness because of our sins, but the Lord is the light of the world and He wants to bring us His light and He doesn't want us to live in darkness. The Lord is the light of the world and He wants His people to walk in the light, not in the darkness. The psalm today says, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord all the earth, sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, he is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. 
if we walk in light, in light, if we are not in darkness, we will see the honor and majesty of our Lord, the beauty in his sanctuary. The Lord wants us to see clearly. He doesn't want us to see through darkness, to be blind. And Christmas, again, is a feast of light. And facing this liturgy today, we can ask ourselves, Lord, where there is still darkness in my soul? Where is, is still darkness? In what point of my soul? I need to bring your light. You need to be present to bring your light, Lord. The Lord is the light of the world. The Gospel of today, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 35 says, When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated to, as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord a pair of turtle doves of two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came to the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And the sword will pierce your own soul too. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear the same Gospel as we heard last Sunday, the Holy Family Sunday. But back then on Sunday, we read St. Matthew's Gospel. Today we read St. Luke's Gospel. And in this theme of light, we see this we see Simeon here this man that was righteous and devout and that received a promise of the Lord that he would not see death before seeing the Lord's Messiah and when Simeon saw the child Jesus being brought by his parents he recognized the Messiah and he said that Jesus is the light he, Simeon makes this prayer to the Lord, Master, now, now you are dismissing your servant because my eyes see your salvation. My eyes see your Messiah. And this child will be a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people, Israel. Jesus was the light to the pagans, to the Gentiles. And salvation, consolation, glory to the people of Israel. Jesus the Messiah. We see here that if we welcome the Lord in our lives, we are welcoming light. We are not wa walking in darkness anymore. But we will walk, we will live in light. In the Lord's light. And Simeon gives this prophecy to Mary. This child is destined for falling and raising of and rising of many in Israel, and a sign that will that will be opposed, 
so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. In the presence of Jesus Christ, the inner thoughts of many are revealed. In the presence of Jesus Christ, our innermost thoughts are revealed because the Lord knows us. The Lord knows everything that we go through and all our thoughts and our feelings are revealed. So in this, in the meditation of the Word of God, we are today also invited to meditate. What are my innermost thoughts? What are these inner thoughts that no one knows but the Lord knows? Everything will be revealed in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the continuation of the celebration of Christmas, to end our time together, I would like to leave you with some words from St. Bernard. And for the liturgy, for the office of readings, the first prayer early in the morning, the church always gives us beautiful texts for us to meditate. And today is St. Bernard. St. Bernard said, The goodness and humility of God our Savior have appeared in our midst. We thank God for the many consolations He has given us during this sad exile of our pilgrimage here on earth. Before the Son of God became man, His goodness was hidden, for God's mercy is eternal. But how could such goodness and mercy be recognized? How could He have shown His mercy more clearly than by taking on Himself our condition? For our sake, the Word of God became a grass. What better proof could He have given of His love? Scripture says, Lord, what is man that you are mindful of him? Why does your heart go out to him? The Incarnation teaches how much God cares for us and what he thinks and feels about us. We should stop thinking of our own sufferings and remember what he has suffered. Let us think of all the Lord has done for us and then we shall realize how His goodness appears through His humanity. The Lord loves humanity. That's why He sent His only begotten Son. May we find the Lord's love, may we find God's love on our life today through the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that was born for us. Amen.